Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Robbie B. And joining me tonight is my partner in crime, Kenny Boucher. What's up, dog? Mm, yo, dog. Great to be here as usual. On this fantastic Wednesday, uh, we could even start calling it, uh, what, the FAQ Wednesday, maybe? FA- FAQ Wednesdays. We need to come like up with a better, a better, uh, a better title. G- G- GW Shit Show Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is alive with the <laughs> gnashing of teeth. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's... um. Obviously, if you're hearing this, it's, uh, well, there was an FAQ um, for Space Marines, and it's, uh, there's a few things to talk about, I feel like. So that we're definitely going to get to that here shortly. Obviously, the title of the show is, uh, did GW finally break the game? Um, well, they, they, they might have. Uh, there's some stuff in there that uh, hopefully we get uh, clarified before it goes into the uh, official FAQ form, I feel like. Uh, but before we jump into all that, we are going to hit up the Tabletop Market Watch segment of the show here tonight. Now, um, I don't know if you've been watching, Kenny, but Chaos got some new stuff. Uh, so they got some new formations and they got some new sick ass special rules. Um, so there might be a formation, but if there is a formation, it's going to come in the new start collecting box for chaos space Marines, which generally does come with the formations where you have to field all the stuff that comes in the box. So that's, that'll be kind of interesting to see what kind of special rules they come up with for chaos right, right now. I don't know what all you could do with a Terminator Lord, a chaos tactical squad and a hell brute. What you got any ideas? <laughs> oh yeah, I got tons of ideas where you can put those models. <laughs> I got fucking a billion ideas. <laughs> oh, it's oh, it's so bad. People, oh man, there's so so many comments about that one. Holy cow! I mean, that's a great starter box for a bunch of people just starting off because it's a great, you know, Terminator Lords look amazing. They're baller. Chaos Space Marines look great, and a Hellbrute's a fantastic little model. Like, you know, I'd buy that. For sure. And I have bought that when I was young and started the game for the first time. Like I would have bought the shit out of those models, you know? No, they're great looking models. The new Hellbrute is the heat, you know, compared to the Dark Vengeance one. But again, uh, we all know how we feel about Dreadnoughts here in the show. <laughs> uh, it's a, They're a little disappointing, I feel like. Well, but- especially, I mean, like a Hellbrute's even worse than a regular Dreadnought because like it can, it just, you can't even like determine if it, what it's going to do is what you wanted to do and they have no access to drop pods. Yeah. I mean, you, so what are you just going to walk across the battlefield? Hey, Hey, Carnifex, how's that go for you? Yeah. Aww. In the history of when, of ever, when has that shit worked? You know? So it's so sad, but money wise, you know, the, the start collecting boxes are always a great value. This one I think ends up being right around a $50 value off. And it will, I mean, for 85 bucks and you're getting $50 off, you know, that's a solid deal. And there's a lot of, you know, mail order businesses out there you can get stuff from. Of course, Dice Head Games, you know, uh, veterans always get 25% off over there. So now you're talking, you know, another $16, $17 off. So, oh, that's so baller. So, like, now I can just fill out all my Chaos Space Marine dreams, fulfill all my desires with all the Hell Brutes and Chaos Terminator Lords. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, there are some that are a little better. Like if you're going to pick up AdMech, the AdMech one's actually pretty solid. Uh, the Space Marine one's cool because it comes with a captain. But those have all been out for a while. We've talked about those for a while. Um, the other one that came out was the Militarum Tempestus one, which is also a solid, uh, very solid as far, as far as contents go. It's two of the Scion squads, one Torox and a Commissar, uh, the Lord Commissar Plastic Kit. It's better than the chaos one. Uh, yeah. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it's <laughs> it's still like uh, you know, you get about fifty bucks for free on that one as well. Obviously, mass mass good on that one. But you know that playability wise, I feel like that one's better. And I'm almost wondering like what the formation is going to be for that one because obviously it's going to revolve around you know getting into Torox and going. So maybe it'll be some sort of like outflank, uh, free scout behind enemy lines thing. Maybe I don't know. What do you think? No, man, it's not bad at all. Like they, I think it's a great move. Like I think these are great deals. This is a good way to, because these are exactly the kind of models that inspire people to play 40K. 
Oh yeah, these are you know? great for you know the basically these veterans will recognize these as the old air quotes battle force boxes from back in the day when if you wanted to get into the game you would start with a battle force then you buy a codex then you buy some pants you know et cetera et cetera. You always made purchases based on what looked cool. You didn't even you didn't think mm-hmm. about it. And so these yeah these are these are great. Like especially you know I, I I like the price I like the models they look fresh. You know you know in, in a vacuum they work fine against each other you know. Yeah, you can definitely play some of these starter boxes against each other. And I think that's probably another another one of the appeal to it. And if you look, you know, the the whole new Battle for Vedra stuff coming out, basically they're rehashing and repackaging and uh, even re-sprued or at least color wise, the old Battle for McCrag stuff, um, among others. And the very first thing they say, you know, when you get the documentation in those boxes, they're like, yo, go to the site you know, to start the hobby. And when you go to the site, it's all a listing on g site of the start collecting boxes themselves. So that's what they're trying to do is grab the people from the big box stores and kind of bring them in to the game, starting with the start collecting boxes or, you know, the big game, so to speak. Yeah, especially at $85, man, you can't, I mean, that's not even money anymore. So you can mm-hmm. really get people hooked, you know, uh, get, get parents to buy, to really buy these for their, their, their kids at, the, at that price point. Yeah, at 85 bucks, you know, that's pretty average, you know, entry point for a hobby in general these days, I feel like. So, um, you know, those uh, those are the big, I guess, um, air I mean, quotes. If you, go, if you go to Walmart to get, you know, the, a video game that just dropped today, it's $60. Right. And I feel like you're going to get more out of <laughs> miniatures than you will out of like, a game. Yeah, like, like if you're like a parent and like you're trying to like, call some hobbies and you know like instill some cool hobbies into your in your children you know you have to think about that 85 bucks is not that big of a deal especially if it's this creative and this artistic and this you know constructive of an activity i could definitely see this working gw is figuring things out like they do good business yeah no without a doubt and then the other release for this week too is the Lost Patrol board game, which is basically five five scouts versus uh, I don't even know. It, pick pick a random number of gene stealers. It's probably bad for them, I suppose. All the gene stealers. Yep. Yeah, and the object of the game to win is to actually get one scout off the board, I believe. So, like, oh, it's that kind of game. Okay, <laughs> it's like get to the chopper on the battlefield almost. Definitely a hoping to get some battle reports. In the Beats Lab, because now, we, if you guys don't know, if you're veterans, you do know, right now we have a Imperial Knights Renegade Battle Report. Three missions back-to-back presented a one-hour-long one video showing off how cool some of these mini-games that GW is making are. I would love to see how the Lost Patrol plays out, and that's not even a difficult one to do. Just got to get some of these tiles. So that kind of segues into, mm-hmm. like, I want to reach out to some people here because... What we've been doing is kind of an army exchange program. We we obviously worked with White Metal Games. If you guys have seen the Mad Max Fury Road themed orc narrative games, we so did. fresh. We did that because of a, of a of a partnership with White Metal Games, where we did an exchange program, where they got to kind of set the narrative of how we promoted their brand, and we used their models and made some amazing content. We would definitely love to hear from anybody at home. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on uh, you know forty at the forty k long war email at gmail like hit us up we'd love to get some lost patrol tiles in we'd love to get some uh silver tower in we'd love to get zone martalis in we've got all like literally we want to do these things and if you're a, a commission studio trying to make it big like let us know we'll promote you man as long as we can uh film it yeah and that's and that's all, all part of bringing a hobby back you know it's all about sharing ideas sharing resources helping to promote the people so you know the studios and the independent you know hobbyists out there so we all rise with the tide you know it's What's what's good for all for a couple of us is is good for all of us because you know at the end of the day, uh, if nobody's playing the games and if nobody's hobbying and nobody's inspired, then that's really bad for all of us. And I think we can agree we're in a better in 2016. You know, June 2016, we're definitely in a better place right now than we were even a year ago. I feel like as far as the hobby's concerned. Oh yeah, so, a year ago the hobby was straight dying. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was, there was not a lot of good stuff being said out there, unfortunately. And no, you know, there, just everyone like, oh, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Now it's it's coming back big time. It's the hobby is coming back, and I am really excited about that. So many people out there online are just sharing pictures and ideas and and, and everything, and that is really what the community is about. And I'm super happy to be a part of that. Super proud, you know, honestly, to be a part of such a big community, Spiky Bits Hobbies Group, you know, the Long War. 
just being out there, just seeing what people are doing. It's like, like just sharing ideas is kind of what this whole thing is about. And that's what makes our game better than every other game, better than video games, better than any, like it's literally because you get everything out of a game and more when you get to like be an artist, when you get to be a a philosopher, when you get to be a competitor, Mm -hmm. when you get to be, you know, a politician, you get to do all the things that like humans love to do all in one amazing hobby. And even folks out there, you know, they're like, oh, I stopped playing in fourth edition, you know, because I didn't like that they were doing all these editions. I mean, you know, even that is a sign of a healthy game. I mean, look at some look at Star Trek battles or Starfleet battles like they've they had one edition. And, you know, I bet those folks would love a second edition to that right now. You know what I mean? So, like, don't take sometimes. Yeah, it is a business and it is about making money, obviously, with Games Workshop. But remember, a lot of things that are happening is a sign of a, a healthy hobby, a healthy and starting to once again, thrive hobby out there. So, you know, keep, keep that stuff in mind. Um, also this week, some new stuff that's coming out. Well, you should see it in stores this week is the new armored containers, which uh, have a toughness instead of an armor value. <laughs> we talked, we talked a while about that one. Oh boy. Uh, that was an interesting one there. Um, and also the two clan packs, the, Brood Lord that came in the Death Storm box from 2014 and the Tech Priest that came out last year around Black Friday weekend, I want to say it was, uh, for Adept- or for Astro Militarum. So some pretty solid releases this week. And now we're starting to hear that there will be something dropping on the 11th, whether, whether it's a new product, whether it's news, we're not exactly sure. But something is happening with Age of Sigmar, and they're either going to start rolling out the new products for that, the new points values, the, the General's Compendium thing that we, that we saw a screenshot of uh, about a month ago. Or, you know, perhaps it's just they're just going to come out with some, some new products. And maybe it's the reboot. It's hard to say. But definitely want to check the interwebs on the 11th or perhaps before because something big is definitely coming to Age of Sigmar. And I, I hope it's great. I, I know you <laughs> haven't played many games yourself, Kenny, but... Uh, uh, approximately zero. Um, but a lot of people I do know like it. Let me um, take this opportunity because I got Mike Aspel on the line on Facebook. He's following along right now. Oh, from work? Yeah, yeah. So he's got something interesting here and it's uh, on the subject of these starter boxes. He says um, with the battle of Vetros and new starter collections, veteran players at the FLGS is need to be good hosts because there's going to be new players to the game. We need to welcome new hobbyists and bring them under our wings. Make sure they win their first game. Uh, do what you have to do to ensure they have a great game. It will pay off in the long run opportunity for FLGS to have some intro model making and painting classes, uh, point folks to the YouTube channels and help them. The rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah, exactly. That was, so, that, that, those are such good points, Mike. Um, you know, <laughs> at the risk of sounding old, you know, back in my day, I had to learn how to paint by basically bribing the old guys that did historical miniatures at the game store, you know, and, and there was no internet. There was no, no real, painting guys that I knew of at the time. Of course there was some, but uh, you know, at, at $25, $30 a book, that was out of my price range. But, you know, as a, as a eighth, seventh, eighth grader, I don't even remember, but you know, we have the opportunity to help hobbyists out there. We all know a little bit, you know, even myself and Kenny, um, we learn off each other a lot too, you know, and it's just like, it's, it's such a good opportunity to be basically an, a, an, an, an assistant or you know a, a teacher to a lot of these folks coming in the store you know even if the store owners which is the case sometimes don't take the extra time and attention you know those people are eventually going to filter out of the product aisles and then come over to the game tables and that's where you know you have an opportunity like mike was saying to either you know help them with their game or even if you're playing a game and they're coming over and talking to you you know take the five minutes out of your game you know smoke you know your buddy can go smoke break you know talk to them about the game like hey what do you like the most uh, you know, or whatever, show them some pictures out of your rule book and, you know, stuff like that. Like we're all ambassadors to the hobby, I feel like. And, uh, you know, it's, it's on us to, to help. And hopefully there will be a, a nice big influx, you know, of, of players here from starting now, all the way, you know, through winter. Cause we all know what happens, you know, in the holidays, every Timmy and Tommy get their, you know, start a box of Edros and go to town on it. I feel like Kenny has left the building. It's all it's <laughs> it's all you, apocalypse cats and Britney Spears now. You were, just, right. you, were, you were just going off on a tangent. I didn't want to interrupt you. 
Can I talk about Britney Spears? You can talk about Britney Spears all you want. Thank God for that. Yo, Britney Spears is looking good these days. I have to admit, she's been worried. she's been working on her game. She's she's your girl. <laughs> I think she's a lot of people's girls. She just doesn't know she's mine. Yeah, yeah. We're, we've been in a relationship since uh, Tiger Beat uh, covered her uh, after her first music video on uh, TRL on MTV. That was literally like twenty years ago, by the way. Yeah, I've been in a relationship her the whole time. <laughs> it's hard to believe she's that old. Oh my goodness! You know, I love it because when I was in high school, like she was the same age as me. Like, oh, she's sixteen. You're sixteen, and now she's like three years older than me somehow. It's like movie magic. Marketing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they say sex sells. I don't know what that means, but yeah. I, uh, I can go to high school with this girl. Nah, dog. She no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> we may have done that on purpose. Oh well. Oh my goodness. So yeah, so much exciting hobby stuff out there, I feel like. Um, and then of course, well, we got a new FAQ today, right? Oh shit. <laughs> it's a Wednesday. It's new FAQ day. Oh, and something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, still tabletop uh, market watch. Have you been following that whole like uh, June 25th uh, G-Dub store thing, Kenny? Uh, that's a negative. Oh, well, well, dang. Don't you read Spiky Bits, man? <laughs> no. You don't watch my videos. I don't listen to your blog. We just call each other. That's well, that's sort of true. I actually do let your videos play in the background when I'm working on the articles and such. When you get when you get that figured out on the blog, I'll do that too. I'll leave it. I'll leave it playing in the background. You just leave it playing in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you could probably get that assistant that comes with Windows 10. I'm not going to say her name because she's going to pop up and ask me something. <laughs> <laughs> lock Cort- that down. Cortana, play this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so on the 25th, Games Workshop is doing another like exclusive run. Hey, come in. We're doing cool stuff and we're going to have these exclusives. And one of the exclusives, at least in the UK, because two stores say they're going to have it, is this really dope looking Eldar sketchbook by uh, Jess Goodwin, of course. And on the cover is the sketch art for this this really dope old figure. It was a Necron or excuse me, a Eldar farseer that actually came out in necromunda he never actually made it to 40k but a lot of people had it and played it in 40k you know from from necromunda and then it's got all the sketch work and you know on on eldar obviously he did a lot of the work with dark eldar i'm not sure if that's in there but man that book looks pretty tight um and it's kind of cool to see them going from you know miniatures to exclusive like books that are available so i almost feel like i love graphic books and oh that's sick I mean, yeah, I'd be a little bit more interested if it wasn't all this Eldar bullshit, but. Yeah, if it was just like a thing in general, and they could definitely do one at a later date because. I Josh, love you know, that old book they had where they had all the OG artwork in it just from everywhere, like collected. What was the hell was that book? Oh, I don't remember. Or the the Horse Heresy Visions one or. Man, this, I'm talking like back in the day, man. Like, and it had like OG Karn the Betrayer, OG. Like, it just had like, it was just sick, like, you know, full color. Mm-hmm. Man, it was like, I remember a couple of my friends had it and I was just like, damn, this book is so tight. A lot of the times the art books are really hit or miss for them, I feel like. Like I've seen some of the stuff, like the Space Marine ones are okay, but then the ones that seem to be more generalized are... Um, the are, thing is, is that we, we have the internet. We have Google. If I want to see sure. these pictures, I will. <laughs> yeah, but it, I need a book to put on my coffee table. That's, you need one. You need one for all your guests, all your parties and all your... Yeah. yeah. There you go. I know what you uh, mean. But they're also kind of doing some groundbreaking stuff too, I feel like, which is really cool because there's going to be for the very first time in you know recent memory, I guess, technically eight years or so, there's going to be a Forge World miniature available at the Games Workshop stores. And it specifically says, hey, this is a Forge World miniature. You know, it's this dope ass like uh, cataphracky armor, like um, character. He might be a captain, might not. But he's got like this glaive and he's just kind of like taking a step forward. Oh, that guy looks like a beast. Who's the guy who's summoning the demon? So that's another apparently exclusive Forge World miniature, and that's going to be available at the Forge World Open Day, which is like July 18th-ish, um, which they've already shown. That's the second exclusive miniature that's going to be available for that. Damn, because that guy is a beast. Traitor, librarian, summoning a demon. Yeah, it looks like he's summoning a bloodthirster. He's just like, this is happening. Yeah, I love it too. He's a librarian. He's got like a, a Freddy Krueger hand. Yeah, right? Super, super like, well, crazy. they should they should have known that Fred was a bad guy based on his insistence to wear a Freddy Cougar hand instead of a four staff stave. You know, like that's a they, bad guy weapon, dog. Didn't Huron Blackheart have a Freddy Cougar hand too? Yes. All the chaos people. Abaddon has a Freddy Cougar hand. Like they all have them. 
<laughs> it's a sure sign of bad guy. <laughs> mm, they definitely should have seen that one coming. Yeah, you guys are stupid. <laughs> Loyalist Space Marines. Uh, he's, in his, he's in his bedroom in his Beats Lab summoning bloodthirsters. Wait, I have no idea. What? So many mistakes were made. Oh, my goodness. Well, you oh. want to take a quick commercial break, come back, and just bang out this FAQ and talk about how GW did what GW do? I think that's a great idea. Dear veterans, quickly, make your way to thelongwar.net and find out how to reap your hard-earned spoils of this long war. For our allies at Dicehead.com have rewarded us all with an extra 6% discount on all Dicehead.com merchandise. So stock up, dear veterans, and enjoy. And we're back. Rob, please explain to me. Did GW just fuck the game up? <laughs> they did something to the game. They need to. Uh, they need to go back and uh, talk to whoever, uh, whatever guru they have helping to write these things, and maybe do a a, a proof of the proof, so to speak. There. So I don't want to jump right on into it quite yet. I want to hit some of this general stuff here that I think. That, now, don't get me wrong. This FAQ is great. There's there's some stuff in here that might be a little redundant, but I like. I like the Games Workshop took the time that if a lot of the same questions were asked, that they addressed them, even though for some people, they might be like, well, that was pretty self-explanatory. How did you not know that, et cetera, et cetera. At least Games Workshop really did the legwork here and addressed a lot of uh, stuff that it might not have need to, like do hurricane bolters get six shots at 12 inches and below? I feel like that's a little self-explanatory. That's, that's kind of crazy. It's just like, what? what? Like... Well, I mean, did they get a lot of questions about it? Or is there that many, you know, it goes along with the new players like, oh, was that like a legitimate question? Is it not explained well in the rule book? Do we need to take a look at it? And I, I kind of liked it to put in the time in there. Um, and I can appreciate that for sure. I mean, I can understand the Hurricane Bolter one, I guess, because even though in the description of a Hurricane Bolter, it says comprised of three bolters. And then you can go look at what bolters are. That could have been too confusing for some people. Uh, yep. <laughs> I mean, I can I can see both sides of the story there. So there's some stuff in here that's redundant. There's some stuff in here that you might not realize right at first that it the the literal level of problems it creates just off of one simple sentence, like so far reaching into the game. And we're going to definitely save those for last. So the one thing I wanted to talk about was librarius. Everybody, you know, that's a big buzzword out there. A lot of people have taken librarius. The old librarius conclave. The yep. number one official three librarians and the white scars uh, that they that everyone takes to, you know, obviously give them an invisibility to, that they cast on two ups, but also to make all their units in their army hit and run. Yep, it, it definitely helps out with, um, it's got good synergy. It's, um, it definitely had, gives you options, and options in this game is is definitely where you want to be at. So they made the ruling that, or clarification, depending on who you talk to, that the librarius, once you do the empiric channeling, you cannot cast any powers for the rest of the, the librarians in the conclave itself. Which is kind of, we talked about it last June, you know, for a while. and right, you know, right when it dropped, we put out a webcast, we put out a podcast, we had a really intelligent and just kind of like, Mm -hmm. super well, you know, argued debate on the subject with contrasting and conflicted opinions. And I think that, you know, we were, you know, we, we presented why you can do it and why you can't do it very well. Yeah. And I was, you know, I didn't want, I, I'm more of an analytical kind of guy. Like I'm going to read the sentences. I'm going to be rules as written. I'm going to be a lot of times. Yeah. I can see the rules as intended, but a lot of times I'm going to be more on the rules as written side. And I just, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to relent there until we, we read the flavor text, so to speak, you know, the italicized text right below the picture. And it was like basically talking about how all they sit around, you know, and they kind of chant and they do, you know, they pop off these powers through the one guy. And I'm like, okay, I can see the intention here just through the, the yeah. Why would text. GW? I love it when people are like, "Oh, that's not real. You can't. You got that's not admissible." And of course, like dog, why did they take the time to write it for you? Right. Cool. Clearly, the inspiration was there. Was that is that from the rule itself, or was that the inspiration for for the rule? You know. So, like, which way do you look at? Yeah, it? They, they they have some fun flavor. They wrote a description of what they intended, and then they wrote some rules and. 
sometimes, you know, GW do what GW do and the rules can be. And also we as competitive player base have a habit of uh, ruining only, things, only seeing the rule the way we want it to, 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 to happen. And we only look for ways to argue in our favor. But sometimes if you take this, take them a minute to sit down and like pretend and play devil's advocate against yourself, you can, you can usually debunk your own argument. Well, I definitely liked your analogy earlier, your story, you know, where basically, you know, we sit around in our beats lab, we come up, we, we start focusing, hyper focusing on like this one mechanic to make, to make this army and to do this thing. And it's really cool on the tabletop. It may be broken and maybe just flavorful, but then, you know, we, a couple of days later, we hit this one rule and it invalidates what we were trying to do. And then we spend weeks and weeks and weeks, if not months, trying to come up with a reason to why it, air quotes does work. Yeah, you, you, you spend all your resources now on arguing and finding points to to validate your opinion, uh, but you didn't. If you just took one minute to try to try to like make a counter argument to your own argument, you'd realize like, and I've done that before. I did that with prescience way back in the day. Um, you mean pre science, yeah, pre science, right? <laughs> <laughs> way back in the day, cast the psychic powers said. Um, Something along the lines of like it was back before we had a psychic phase sixth edition when you cast your you know your powers at the beginning of the turn, and I was like, well, you know, uh, at the beginning of the movement phase or 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 something it was something something and something where I was convinced that meant I can move my psyker then cast my psychic powers, right? Ooh. Or I can move because it said okay here it is it said the the psyker's movement at the beginning of the psyker's movement. At the side, beginning of the psychic's movement phase. So I was like, well, I'll just move the unit I'm trying to prescience into range of 12 inches of this psyker. Then I'll throw prescience on him. Big you know, baby was like, no, it's the, it's the beginning of the movement phase. I was like, no, it's just the psyker's movement phase. Like, I mean, that's this guy. So I could just do him last. And then I literally argued for it and argued for it. Then I just sat there and thought about it for like five minutes. And, and after David shut me down, and I like just was like, damn it. I can make way more arguments to counter my opinion. Now, obviously, that's not a big deal anymore because now we have a second phase that happens after the movement phase. But GW did actually at that point FAQ it that you could not do what I was convinced I can do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like I, I have a, such a vivid memory of doing this to myself. You know, of just like, oh, it works this way. Let me give you my five point, you know, PowerPoint presentation on why it works this way. Like, <laughs> Step into my office here. Oh man. Yeah. No, I, I think we're all guilty of that to some degree, but when you start seeing these FAQs and you start reading it and kind of drilling down into it, it starts, it starts to make sense on a, on a couple of points. And obviously there's some glaringly obvious things I feel like too, but then there's some stuff that just innocuously off the cuff really kind of has the potential to change a lot of things. And we're definitely headed that way. So the one thing I wanted to talk about were a couple, one of the major PowerPoint uh, presentation points. The, the, the next point in our presentation will hey, be... What you see here on this slide. So Skyhammer Annihilation Force has always been another buzzword, keyword, hot topic of debate, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a lot of folks want to add characters, whether it's an independent character or, or what, what have you to the four to you know some of the units in there so you can boom land first turn assault or boom land do some sort of crazy shooting thing and you know we talked about on the show around the same time about well no i guess that was one of those bundles that came out it wasn't exactly around the time the codex dropped but regardless we talked about it to where basically these things there's two different types of things on a or two different points of rules on a formation. One is a command benefit. One is a special rule. And if things are listed under special rule, they do not confer to independent characters. Command benefits do. And that was actually confirmed in, in the codex on page nine. If a Skyhammer Annihilation Force, uh, the Skyhammer Annihilation Force, can an independent character join this formation? If so, do they gain the special abilities bestowed on the formation now they didn't come out and say special rules which i think is kind of a mistake on their part because like it is said, two very different things command benefits which do confer and special rules which don't confer and it says the answer an independent character can join this formation in the usual way but they will not gain the special abilities bestowed upon the formation and i think actually skyhammer and Alicia force was one of the formations that said command benefits and then it categorized the abilities as special rules i and, actually do not remember 
And some and see some previous formations had not. So, but they did. And we had a big talk about it. We're like first on the first note. Oh, that's right. This was one of the very first ones to to make their stuff special yes. rules. So we, there was two major, and this is to me redundant, but there are people, like I got a friend out here named Arthur, who's best friend, who swears to God he can join Dante to a Skyrim as a force. He will literally give you his PowerPoint presentation <laughs> and, you know, in great detail, trying to explain how he can do this. And what we argued back in the day, I was like, before we even get to the fact that they outlined it as a special rule, and it says, unless otherwise stated, special rules never confer to the independent character. Uh, before we get to that, it said, this formation has the following command benefits. Models in this formation, blah, blah, blah. Models in this formation, blah, blah, blah. It's like, dog, that model's not in this formation, homie. Like, that unit's not in this formation. Like, I don't, like, I'm, not, I'm just looking at it from like, yo, put a kibosh on it right now. It literally says, it, I mean, it gives us their own rule right there. It's so far from unless otherwise stated as a wording. I don't even have to go into the next stage of the argument, which is, it is not under, otherwise stated. You know what I mean? So like it's completely shut down. But like we said in our earlier, you know, segment or our earlier opinion, like sometimes we get in our head, we build this army. We say, hey, this is going to be the greatest army ever. We played a few times. We love it. And then people are like, you can't actually do that. And all we want to do is come up with excuses why we can't. So this is a classic case of people got high on their own product, which is that's rule two of selling crack. You don't get high on your own product. You never get high off your own supply. Everybody knows this. Yeah, straight up, bro. It's the second rule of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so the second, what did you think of this where they, they actually break it down? They're like, can any chapter use the Skyhammer Annihilation Force? It says any chapter co- chosen from Codex Chaos Space Marine can use it. Chapters from other from codexes. From Space Marines, yep. You keep uh, saying Chaos instead of Space Marines. Oh, um yes. it's cool i got chaos number two i mean i can't i can't help it it's just it's hard it's hard to they get basically they wanted you to remember that this is for codex space marines you know codex space marines and exo or whatever the fuck they call it these days it is just for these guys so they're making a clear distinction between this and all the other space marine like factions they're still doing it yep no it's good and it's important to also make this distinction too as factions, they are different. They are different from allies. However, they are still all air quote space marines for purposes of psychic powers. You know, uh, special chaos space marine abilities, hatred. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. for enemies. So they're making like these interesting distinctions, which is going to segue into like I think our next piece, which is interesting that they're going to go so hard in the pain of making some of these distinctions here, but then get kind of sloppy on this next one. So, and if you're probably wondering why we're, why we're bringing this up, if, and, and, you know, we're not even towards the the end of the show yet, but this, this is probably uh, a big one. If you listen to the show here uh, regularly. So question, um, if you have an iron hands independent character and a unit of white scars, would the iron hands character keep the feel no pain special rule from the flesh is weak and the white scars keep their hit and run special rule? The answer is no. If the unit contains models drawn from two different chapters, it counts as being from neither chapter and thus benefits from neither chapter tactic, which I don't know. What do you feel about that, Kenny? Like that's, that's pretty an, it's literally an insane waste of time. FAQ is a complete fucking cop out because it's literally all they did was copy and paste the phrase from the codex. That's what it says in the codex. Like was, it says that. I was that. also disappointed. I was like, what? Like I got excited. It's like, are they going to undo what? No, what? Like I was, I, I got one sentence and, it, in and I was like, what? They're going to literally say yes to this. I was like, why did you even write this down? It's, it's like literally clearly stated. So that's dumb. Um, but I think it leads into it does on, on page four. It says, do blood angels, space wolves, gray knights, and dark angels all count as having chapter tactics for the purposes of joining allied space marine units? That is, does my ultramarines unit lose the benefits of chapter tactics? If they are joined by Mephiston, answer: A unit from any of these factions joins a unit with the chaos or with the Space Marine faction, or vice versa. Neither unit benefits from Chapter Tactics. Now, I have a quick question for you. Where can people go real fast to see all these FAQs if they wanted to read along at home? Is is these already up on the Spiky Bits download section? No, they are not. Uh, actually, uh, unfortunately, Haspel had to work. He didn't get me over the FAQ, but I'm sure they will be at some point. Um, by the time you hear this. If not, you can go over to Facebook, of course, GW site. Uh, they got them all up on there. There's 12 pages, 12 images of these as well. well, well now, what is that Facebook page? I think it's just Warhammer 40,000, like actually typed out 40, 000. 
I'm so actually, ask. okay. So it is. So if you guys are, tra- are curious, if you, if you're first time listening and you don't know where these rules are, at the very least, Warhammer 40,000 on Facebook. And then, you know, you can always go over to spikybits.com on the top uh, black tab. It says mission packets or downloads or something to that effect. Uh, click on that. And they're actually in there as well. Um, in a, a convenient PDF searchable download. Thank you, Mike Haspel, for uh, taking care of that for us. Mm, good old Haspel. So back to the question on Mephiston. First off, solid example by the questioner. And Mephiston mm-hmm. should always be your go-to, you know. Obviously a man after my own heart. Yes, yes. Um, but this is kind of a, another semi-redundant like this is like I mean like we we're gonna we're gonna dig into it deep but like right on the surface this is literally practically a, a backpedal is practically is a meaningless statement because, yeah, because none, none of the factions have chapter tactics right yet that we know of that we know of now obviously there could be a shitload more you know faction based FAQs coming out where they completely rewrite uh, the special rules of these factions into the sub context of a chapter tactic. Uh, but currently, all that means is, you know, just the Space Marines lose their special abilities. And people are talking about death of super friends left and right right now. Mm. And the reason It's the reason we talk about it is because we love super friends. We invented super friends back in the day, back before 6th edition and 5th edition still. You know, we were running all that shit, man. And so, yes, if you play like an OG traditional super friends, we're coming to the Great Wolf and White Scars, like how I used to play them. Yeah, this is going to fuck your shit up. This is like you make your army not work. But this is 2016, hombre. Like, people are running into Thunderdome, man. They're running Ravenwing command squads with two-up rollable jinx saves and hit and run built into the special rules of the Ravenwing bikers plus Company of the Great Wolf for, you know, Wolfgar battle leaders attached. Like, there's no chapter tactics here, homie. Like, nothing here stops them from doing what they do. Right. It, sh- it sure doesn't. Um as far as like the super friends go, but you know, and it is so funny. Like you, you can just imagine space wolf players are just like laughing. They're like, well, we don't really lose anything. I mean, dark Nothing. angels doesn't really lose anything when they join up with anybody. Um, so unless they're going to drop, you know, an FAQ, which remember blood angels, space wolf, gray knights and dark angels do not have an FAQ yet. So we have at least four more weeks of FAQs right there, you know, just for them. Uh, maybe they'll drop errata and just straight errata all of their special rules. So, you know? uh, so a not now. So like we are, this could matter. And obviously the community as a whole doesn't like super friends. They hate it. And in the past people, the ra- the way people suggested we fix super friends style death stars is by banning battle brothers from tournaments. And I am fundamentally against this concept. This is dumb. Like that's literally ridiculous. Uh, but I could get behind a GW FAQ if they took the time, not low hanging fruit shit show redundant ass FAQs. It'll make sense. If they took the time to show me that they had a greater purpose. And if in the next four weeks, they write these, you know, they write us a dark angels FAQ that gave, you know, green Marines, a chapter tactic grim resolve and Deathwing uh, chapter tactic called something else. And they gave Ravenwing bikers a chapter tactic. And they put all their special rules that they're known for into that chapter ca- tactic. That would fix a lot of the problems with the, I've got one de- I've got one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, one guy here attached to this squad with funeral pain. And now we have every special rule of the game. It would absolutely fix that without banning an entire interaction of the game. Now I could get behind that, but GW would have to, you know, pull up their pants and sit down and actually really care about it because there is going to be some thought process behind it. You're going to have, I mean, it's more than just uh, one statement. It's going to have to be a, an errata or, you know, replace this word on the, these sentences on these pages. Every instance of this special rule changed to the chapter tactic, blood angels, the, you know, the black rage or whatever, you know, they're going to have to work their asses off to really think about these things. And if they do, we could actually see a more tactical version of space wings finally being played uh, versus a, you know, every special character in the in the game of 40k that gives you the special rule you want joined in my unit. I I feel like if any book out there is gonna get the love, you know, and the resources allocated to them, it would definitely be the Space Marine book. So I think 
you know, if that was their, their direction, that that is definitely a possibility. I feel like, um, I don't, I, you know, I don't think ban, ban, banning Battle Brothers is the answer to anything in general because obviously Games Workshop wants that in the game, unfortunately, you know, and it, it would be an easy fix, but I don't think it's the right fix from a player standpoint. You know, a lot of people have started out these little allied forces, you know, and Games Workshop obviously hopes that they take those little allied forces and turn them in a full-blown army, you know, obviously from a business standpoint. So I think it any anything that helps both the business side of the hobby and also the actual player interaction side of the hobby, I'm all for like, this is a business. We talked about it earlier. You know, there has to be concessions made uh, for that, you know, basically, but obviously don't, don't take advantage of us. That's a whole nother episode we could even talk about, but you know, at the end of the day, um, these, this is, this is a very interesting point in here, almost as interesting as, uh, you know, the, the new armor containers having a toughness value instead of an armor value. Like, is there something else coming down the pike that we don't know about maybe with a potential rumored eighth edition, uh, you know, w- where things become more streamlined if they got rid of armor values, you know, we talked about that, I believe last episode where I gave our argument about why it w- would or wouldn't work in certain areas. So, you know, you just don't know, and it's hard to really get, you know, get on Games Workshop for a lot of these. It's hard to give anything, give credible criticism, I feel like. Yeah, and, and like, let me, here's a great example. In the course of this show, like last week's episode, we talked about toughness and armor. We just, like, came up with a, some off-the-cuff solutions to the problem. That was in the course of an hour of just intelligently engaging each other in a what-if conversation. You know what right. I'm saying? And we did a better job than GW. Now, obviously, we weren't perfect. Like, lots of people came online and commented and said, what about this? You could do this. And a lot of the community kind of chimed in and came up with a lot of things we didn't even think about. Oh, and but that I'm was saying, amazing, by the way. But I'm saying, in the course of an hour, we did, we put clearly more thought into it. And in, like, the course of this show, by the time we're done here, you're going to see it in yet again another hour. We ha- will have blown holes wide in some of the things GW has done without thinking, without even one 30-minute conversation with somebody who plays 40K you know, with more than two drop hunts as a, you know, as a teaser to what we're going to be talking about. P- PS Games Workshop, hire us. Yeah. Um, all right. So now here's, here's a rule. And I, I imagine we're going to spend the rest of the show talking about this one. It, it just seems so innocuous at first. Like, so like cavalier that it, it, it it's true. The true gravity of these next two sentences really, uh, almost, almost escaped me at first until I did a double take and I was like, wait a minute. And, and, and it was actually, I was, I was talking to Kenny about it and he's like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, go look at this. Like, this is, this could be a thing. So the question is, do space Marine drop pods count as solid walls that block line of sight? Answer. It depends on how the model is constructed. Use the actual model to determine line of sight. So they have given you permission. Now we're just going to breathe. I'm just, I'm going to just going to chime in. We're off to the races. The races. <laughs> Currently they've given you permission to model for your advantage, whatever the advantage you want is. The advantage is either in this syntax before you even get deeper into it. The advantage here is either I want a block line of sight or I don't. Now me as the guy who has the five, six, seven, 20 drop pods, I could say, I really don't want them to see my army. So I'm going to model them to shut. Or let's say, I have a bunch of shooting models that are coming down on drop pods and auspexes and cover reducing items of war gear. Let's say I want to benefit from cover save and I don't want to give cover saves, but at the same time, uh, I don't want to block my own line of sight. Maybe I'll just model them open. So they're giving you absolute permission to model them for your unique advantage. Which it seems very nice. Uh, thank you, Games Workshop, for uh, being uh, for the courtesy. However, it creates a ton of problems on the tabletop. Remember, we like to break things, um, whether it's on purpose or accidental. And, you know, as we talked on the webcast earlier tonight, you know, Kenny started extrapolating things that that he that we hadn't even talked about originally, you know, just in our phone conversation earlier today, you know, and then I brought up some stuff based on that, too, you know, and, and I had a discussion with uh, Evan Valdyke earlier um, as well. And, you know, he even made a meme already about it, you know, with General Taggy, you know, on the Death Star, he's like, the drop pod is now the ultimate power in the 40k universe, because it kind of is like, if you, 
you know, if you, if you start uh, breaking this stuff down on, on what could happen, you know? Um, so just, just taking that right there, we're, we're just going to put a pin in that. Right, right, right out the great. Yeah. Permission to, to undo the last 10 years of drop hide, you know, courtesy slash conventional wisdom. Uh, yep. Question. Are drop pod doors ignored for game purposes once deployed? Answer. No, they are still part of the model. So, <laughs> impossibly, GW has given you permission now to deploy all models within the drop pod within six inches of a pedal. Because drop pods are open top. And open top vehicles can deploy their infantry payload anywhere from any point of the hole. A dark Eldar Raider gets to p- pull its witches out from the, the, the very tip of the prowl. Like, mm-hmm. this is a thing. This is established, bro. Like, so now they're giving me even more to think about with this whole, it depends on how you model it, because it didn't give me guidelines on how to model it. It said it depends on how it's modeled. Oh. Mm. Oh, so that means now I'll give you one choice example before we blow everything up. Let's just say I have a dreadnought in a drop on. Just one. Okay, got a standard, whatever, no big deal. Let's say I glued all the doors shut except one. I put this drop pod down. I've modeled it this way as per GW specifications of it depends on how it's modeled. Okay, this is how it's modeled. This is how a lot of site is treated. I put it down, scatter it. Oh, I scatter like 10 inches off the cuff. Put my one pedal that I didn't glue shut down. Okay, then my dreadnought gets six inches out from that pedal. He's in position, and that drop pod is giving him a nice piece of line of sight blocking terrain because every other door is glued shut. Boom. I've absolutely been, been given permission to do that. That is not even remotely criticizable except for gentlemanly protocol. You just made a mobile bunker. Yeah, I mean, be, uh, with more tactical ability than any other mobile bunker in the game. So please, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Rob. Continue, because I know there's more than just that. So just basically to pull all this together, it says, can the occupants of a drop pod move after it lands and opens the hatches, i.e. have the occupants disembark from a transport and therefore can can move and have they just arrived from deep, deep strike and therefore cannot. When it lands, the units inside must disembark. The movement and subsequent restrictions on the units are described under placing disembark models and disembarkation restrictions in the Warhammer 40K or Warhammer 40,000, the rules. And there's another FAQ point in here that says, do they count as deep striking? And the answer is yes, the passengers count as deep striking. Mm. So, okay. So they gave it, they came back around and gave us some logical stuff. Now, this is an interesting FAQ because obviously Black Mains just came out a couple of months ago. That changed the world before any of these rules. That was a gross army list because without even flinching, they could do 20 drop pods that come in on turn one, I think. Right. And now you're telling me? Now, like, here's one example of why this is dirty. Um, a drop pod with its pedals open is twice the, takes up twice the space as a drop pod with it closed. So now you're talking about, oh, I want my drop pods to be open so I can choke out the lines of the battlefield because you can't just walk over a pedal. Right. It counts as part of the vehicle. You have to stay an inch away from it now. You got to stay an inch away from it. Additionally, uh, people love to get a, to get a low scatter on a drop pod coming in so they can get it within three inches of an objective. So now you have to kill the view, the the drop pod too, to have it not claim this objective with the pedals down plus three inches. Holy shit, dude. It is so That's That's a big footprint that gives you options. Like you can have a drop pod almost nearly, you can't claim two objectives, but you could be right there. And if, you know, one drop pod on the other side happens to get blown up, then you start making some tactical decisions about which objective your new drop pod that's got this huge, you know, 10 inch footprint or whatever is, you know, claiming. Yes. And so there's one major benefit. So there's a, pro, there's a pro and there's a con. Uh, there's no con. Sorry. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? so, so with these drop pod armies where they can have this insane number of drop pods that come down turn one, these armies now can just decide how they want to build what percentage of their drop pods for what task in what way. This is totally legal. You can say, I want, oh, I have 20 drop pods in my black mains. I want five drop pods with all pedals open. These are going to be my get to objective drop pods. Uh, they're, they're, they're dual role. 
These drop pods, they're designed to get to the objectives. So I don't have to like waste two drops to get on objectives. Like I know that with an average roll, I have more than 50% chance to get within three inches of, of drop pod of objective with this. The second purpose to having like a handful of these open drop pods is that since that is all the whole of the vehicle for the inertial guidance system for like drop pods stopping when they get within an inch or, or, or of an enemy model or they touch one of your own, now you can control mm-hmm. how the other ones fall. Start, when, it's like almost it's, like air brakes. It's like having two drop pods. You basically have two drop. When you build a drop pod wall, it's all about putting drop pod where you want it, having your other drop pod be in a situation where it's going to stop if it goes back toward your drop pod or toward the enemy. Now you've just doubled the amount of drop pods you have based on footprint to do this wall. So let's say you have 20 drop pods, you make five of them full open. You drop those all in, you get them to where you want on the objectives. If, if objectives are not a thing right now, they are your first ones to drop in so you can start bouncing off of them to build your wall. Now let's say your second row of drop pods all have, you know, one pedal open and the rest of the door is shut. Now let's say that's five more of those. You know what I mean? Now let's say you have five drop pods where it's like a, where it's all shut. You know what I mean? And we're only at 15 drop pods, you know, in this total, they all come down to one and you don't place them all then scatter. You place them one by one. You literally can sit there in your own beats lab. Think about what drop pod door shut glued configuration best suits you. And I do believe you need to glue them bitches. Cause I don't think you're allowed to just say, Oh, mine are on magnets and I'm going to change it for the game. Like you've taken it definitely too far at that point. Cause they're not, you know, unless you want to fall back on, it depends on how they're constructed. Well, mine are constructed with magnets, homie. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the worst. This is the worst. I mean, I can, th- I can't even, I mean like dog, literally 20 drop pods with open pedals. Let's say you didn't want to abuse any line of sight. 20 drop pods with open pedals. The way drop pods, in my opinion, are meant to be played, open pedals, right? 20 drop pods with open pedals is closer to 35 drop pods in how much space of the table they displace. And I think I think a friend of the show, Austin, said something about like to literally take up all the space on the table just by the footprint. I think he said it was something like 56. Now imagine if you do that now with you know the footprint thing. Like what you're you can take you can legitimately and like you and this and that's just drop pods nut to butt uh, well no i think it was i think it was with room in it that, that dudes couldn't walk by you know right so, so, like with so that right room now buffer. right now a pedal just has to be like three inches from another pedal and no base in the game can get through it because the bases are bases are an inch and a half right the smallest base in the game um no it's an inch 25 mil so you have an inch so three inches is the mat is it right? so like you if you have 20 of these drop pots with pedals open all dropping in and you get some percentage of them within about three inches of each other you you're going to cover more than half of the usable space on the table before you even get your guys out of the drop pod yeah it's i mean it's just bananas like the the, the things you can put and we haven't even start, started really good getting outside of the the box air quotes we're just going open or close like what if you glue three shut keep two open or keep one open, just like Kenny was saying now, but you run a guy in there to, to hide out inside the drop pod. Basically. Yeah. Dog, literally five dudes in a drop pod with one pedal open is the perfect backfield objective. So there we go. We've given that we've given, let's give that drop pod a name. We call, we're going to call that the, 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 we'll call that one. The the, uh, (laughs) call it the backfields reach around. So the backfield reach around drop pod, all doors shut, but one. So that way it has the best chance of uh, being able to be within three inches of the objective while also um, getting your guy out behind it and being obscured. So you could put five guys behind this drop pod with one pedal open and they can hide and be completely obscured a line of sight, but they can also get out up to six inches from that pedal if they need to. So, that is one obvious bullshit drop pod idea. Then you have drop pods where maybe, you, I mean, but I mean, honestly, I don't see any reason not to. I think that you just have three drop pods. I think you have the backfield reach around drop pod, the open pedals and the closed pedals. I don't see any reason to do any other type of drop pod. Not, not really. I mean, but then remember the, the plastic ones that are available, you know, on the shelf, those aren't the only drop pods out there. There's also the larger Lucius pattern ones. Right. Now we have to see, do they say every drop pod in the game or do they, right. I mean, cause Lucian, Lucius pattern drop pod is its own entry. Like, so yep. 
How you do, got the we, Anvilus, you got the, you even have the Charybdis. Do you we know? play those the same or differently? I mean, like, what do we do now? I mean, but yeah, if we assume that we're going to play them exactly the same, Lucius Powder Drop Pod, best drop pod in the game. Like, literally, you know, you can do the Lord's work with, with those, you know, so the Lord of Darkness. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, I mean, it's just crazy. Like, the more we think about it, we haven't even, we didn't prep for this. We talked about it briefly in the webcast and we just, these just came to us. Like, we spent an hour total maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes there maybe you know 20 minutes here and we just like look at how dumb this is what did gw do in their beats lab like what i mean what what the fuck were they thinking like they didn't have one conversation with one other person and i want to quote my casper real quick because you know he's on the hotline he says um uh first off he says rob is a geek for knowing the general's name the general which general i got some star wars uh meme Oh, Taggy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, he first off, he says, GW is getting that feedback now, though. It's genius that they put everything up on Facebook because they can tell, because uh, everyone can just sit there and comment like that they're fucking up. And it's like, everyone can see that. So that's huge. So maybe that, maybe GW will actually utilize social media for the right reasons for once. Um. He also says, also, when a drop pot scatters now, if you open the doors, you have to make sure the minimum distance allowed between uh, you to open the door uh, without being an inch of an opponent model. So, like, there's more opportunities to mishap here. But this is this is something I wanted to mention. Where does it say when I have to open the doors, when I have to close the doors? Right. When's my, when's my open the door face? When's my open the door face? Like, that's not even, like, can't I just model the drop pot with the doors open, glued that way? Is that not modeled? Like when I put the drop pod down on the table the, and I have the doors already open, like I don't have to keep it closed and then blow the hatches when I, like when I'm done scattering. What, what, I mean, where does it say that? It I, says, I think it says, well, no, it says, uh, no, it just says it must disembark. I think it actually says. There might be one line in there, but, it all, the I, but yeah, I'm going to trump that. that with modeling. I'm just going to glue the hatches down, dog. Well, I mean, conversely, what? Okay, so you blow the hatches. So now it's my next turn. Am I allowed to close the hatches? See, and here's why. This is our whole. Now we we've been harping on this. We've been harping on this. I mean, you could because everybody out there knows somebody that's going to try this against them on the tabletop. But let let me and Rob take one second to play the devil's advocate, as we 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 talked about just one second ago, and let's let's talk about why this is actually a thought out rule. Um, we'll take the counterpoint. In the 41st millennium, uh, good old uh, General Rob, he calls me up on the phone and he's going to ask me a very important question. He's going to ask me, yo, I need you to go down there and I need you to fuck up these orcs. Uh, I was like, yo, man, General, what do you think I should do? He's like, yo, I think you should take some drop pods, homie. It's like, worry, worry, worry. I'm going to take them drop pods. Just go down there and fuck them up, right? Any, anything I should know? Well, actually, now that you mention it, uh, on the eastern side of the battlefield, they got just ludas everywhere entrenched. I mean, these guys have... They're just deadly, you know, just shooting wild, man. They're just, you know, crazy, right? But on the on the western side of the battlefield, they got all these like bikers that are trying to maneuver around. I mean, it's gonna be kind of crazy. Like, well, general, what should we do? He's like, Oh man, attack pattern alpha beta zeta, man, whatever. Oh shit, I forgot about that one. That's the one where we come in and we tell and we program in our drop pods to open and close the doors depending on uh where we need cover and where we need not cover to be. Yeah, of course, because you notice in our drop pods, we have those huge cog cranks at the bases of the hinges in the doors, and you know we come through and we take those drop pods back to the ship afterwards anyway. We don't just blow the doors off. They lower down and they have a big crank on them. We're going to drop down, we're going to get out, and then we're going to lift the doors on the eastern facing so that the Ludus can interact with us. And then on the western facing, we're going to drop them wild, and we're going to get out, space them out, use our own drop pods to disrupt the maneuverability of the orc bikers, while the Luda's uh, cannons have to chew through every inch of our drop pods to interact with us. Yeah, Commander, that's a great idea. I totally forgot we had the ability to do that in the 41st millennium with all this sick-ass technology. It's a lot like how we use rhinos to do exactly the same thing. (laughs) And just get out the right side when there's stuff on the left. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you could easily argue, like, yo, actually, it makes fucking perfect sense. From a th- from a thematic and a tactical standpoint, um, yes. But you know, we all know how, like, you know, realistic uh, uh, 
notions applied to the actual game, well, that always leaves a lot to be desired too. But I can because see both ways for once sure. Once you get once you get something like this in the hands of a competitive individual, it's that's not good. Where, it's going to be bad. Yeah. Like I said, you can bypass every rule they just wrote with the stupid depends on how it's modeled clause. Oh my gosh. So terrible. Like I've said, this one's like literally this one's modeled one door glued down one, all the other doors glued up. The term, the term modeling for advantage is not a new term. It has been around for a while. Yeah. They like, they're like, they're down. They're like, yeah, bro, whatever you want, man. Ain't ain't a thing. Like, so there's no disadvantage. There's none of this. Like got to open. So like in a perfect world, GW, this is what I think their intent was. Sure. Um, I think that their intent was that drop pods, of course, their doors open. And when their doors open, they're huge. And every part of the drop pod counts as the drop pod. It's this huge template. It's amazing, right? And it's like not as easy to put in spaces as you think it is because when you're talking about inertial guidance system, everyone treats drop pods as literally there's nothing to, nothing bad can happen, right? Like you put it anywhere, nothing bad happens. But if we're saying that based on like the order of operations here that you place it, scatter it, then open the doors. And if the doors are part of the model and unless it's modeled shut and you can't open it, you have to open it. If you can't put it there, once you find the final location, do you use inertial guidance protocol to bounce back off the enemy while lowering the door phase? Or do you say, I can't place my drop pod here? Yep. And that's like, like what are we doing here? Like, so I think their intent is that drop pods might not be as safe to place as we once thought they were. But at the end of the day, every rule is bypassed by how you modeled it rule. Like that's, I mean, that's crazy. Does that mean that from that on my rhinos now, I just better best be modeling my hatches to open so I can get that extra two inches uh, when I get out of the rhino. Same thing with my land raiders. Like <laughs> the, the winged, the winged rhinos are going to be a thing now. The scourge like, of the tabletop. Like, think about the side hatch, man. That thing is like the the length the, or the height of the rhino again, like laid down. Then you get to go six years out from there. I mean, like side hatches on a Land Raider, man. Like, the, I mean, it's crazy. It's a it's a Pandora's box of ridiculousness, all from one little innocuous sentence that I don't feel like their intent was nefarious. Like, I don't feel like they were trying to do anything bad here. They just they just threw it out there, and their maybe- beats lab is weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need to they need to bebop some more on that one for sure because it's uh whew. it's a little frustrating and I'm sure you know a lot of people have already caught on to it if not you know more people are more and more people are going to catch on to this. I haven't actually gone back to the Facebook page to see what what folks are saying about it yet, but I'm sure there's a there's a pretty good thread going on. What is it? Page uh page 4 of 12. So if you go to that particular um if you go to that particular picture on GW's Facebook page, I'm sure there's some choice comments on that right now. <laughs> I can't imagine that there wouldn't be a hilarious amount of comments to read through. Oh, I'm sure there's like some really comical stuff, but hopefully everybody's like, you know, respectful and stuff because I mean, I'm cautiously optimistic on this whole situation because, you know, we went so many years without GW even caring that now they care. So I refuse to believe that they don't care anymore when they're clearly making some kind of effort. Now their effort is super half-hearted and super lazy, um, but we don't know their story. We don't know what their FAQ department comprises of. Is it literally just this one guy? Yes, it's this one guy on his lunch break going up to you know some of the studio designers trying to figure out who wrote what. And just being like, yo, what do you think of this? Yo, what do you think of this? And the dude's like, you know, just banging on his keyboard, looking over, yes. You know, banging on his keyboard, looking over, no. Banging on his keyboard, uh, yes, because of I mean, this. Where so, does this guy exist in their corporate structure? Does he does he, is he going to get in trouble for making bad decisions? Is he not empowered to make real decisions? I mean, we don't know what his story is. Where is it more than one is. guy? Like we just you know? we don't know, and it probably it's probably better that we don't. It could know. be insanely unfair of us to say GW's fucking up. Like it, it might not even be nearly that situation. You know, like we don't we don't know how like their the departments interact with each other. We don't know what their own internal corporate structure and poli- politicking for advantages. We don't know any of that shit. So right now, as someone who just loves, loves to play this game, I'm very, very disappointed with the laziness and the shittiness, I guess, is the, the most accurate way to describe these, this FAQ. Like, there's just nothing about this FAQ that's eye-opening or well thought out. Nothing that a solid 30 to 45-minute dialogue with some of your friends couldn't have determined was a bad move. 
I, you know, I will agree with you on that point there. You know, there, there is stuff that if you had proved or just, you know, vocalized this out loud back and forth and, you know, a round table kind of even discussion that a lot of this stuff wouldn't even be in here, but I do applaud their effort, you know, with trying to be as thorough as possible still with something that was, you know, obviously the most commented and most questioned book out of all of them. And clearly the most popular one. The Dallas Hot Cowboy. Haskell says there's 107 comments on the, the Facebook thread right now. I can only imagine. I actually, I'm going to go there right now. I just can't help myself. Let's see what kind of silliness is about to ensue. So we're over here. It is the Warhammer 40,000 typed out just like, you know, the actual number. Page one of 12. So there's 20. Oh wait, there's, so there's 15 comments on page one. 34 on page two. Eight on page three. 107 on page four. Oh, my goodness. Uh, making the doors an official part of the model means that we have a huge footprint and models will be able to deploy with a very long distance away from the pod itself. It's open top, meaning you can deploy from any part of the model. Yep. So this guy knows what's up. Jason Wicks, you must be listening to our podcast right now. Uh, yeah, you, GW, you are straight fucking up. Hire the long war to come in. Well, they've already said they'd work for European minimum wage for, guess, as long as we get some of that European health care. Um, and we would come in and we'd ha- completely handle your entire comments department and FAQ release. Yeah, it turns out I'm actually pretty good at that sort of thing. <laughs> it's kind of like what we do literally 40 hours a week. Literally. 14 comments, 24 comments, 8 comments, 16. Yeah, this is clearly the winner on the... Uh, so the, the drop per- on one has gotten all the comments on the, on the Warhammer 40K Facebook page? <laughs> yeah, clearly the... Uh, yeah, it easily... It, like three to one, four to one on a lot of them. It's yeah. There's <laughs> quite a discussion dust, going on there. Dust off your old space wolf black mains, drop pot, 23 drop pot armies and glue them doors. However you want them to be for whatever purpose you want. Just drop 20 drop pods in on turn one and enjoy uh, making your opponent rage quick. When you take up literally more than 60% of the battlefield, just in square inches and usable. <laughs> Area. Uh, P.S. Don't do that. P.S. Don't do that. You're a dick if you do that. Yeah, for real. Wow. Man, the time has really flown by tonight. And we kind of knew it would with something like this. It's so provocative. It's uh, there's I, I could talk more about it for sure. But man, it's just uh, so much to say. And we like I said, we're, there's be a lot more coming down the pike for sure. I feel like on this because uh, I hope there's like an in-between draft and we don't just go to the final draft. Like I hope there's. Man, there's a, please. Give me, give me some, give me a second draft. Give me a third fucking draft. You know what I mean? Then give me a final draft. Yeah. Like, or, you know, just send it over to us. I'll sign the NDA. I won't disclose it, but it's I'll so tell you. It's so easy. We're as fans, we're basically writing your FAQ for you. All you have to do is pick the right questions to answer and answer them goodly. <laughs> yep. I agree. All right. Well, I think that's about it. Kenny, what do you say? Yo, dude, let's call it right here. <laughs> I don't think of a better stopping point personally. So uh, Haspel isn't here to take us out. So we'll do the, uh, we'll do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> Make sure you head on over to the long That's the home of the battle report for exclusive content, early access videos, and more become a veteran of the long war today. Dear veterans quickly make your way to the long and find out how to reap your hard earned spoils of this long war. For our allies at SecretWeaponsMiniatures.com have rewarded us all with an extra 10% discount on all Secret Weapon Miniatures merchandise. So stock up, dear veterans, and enjoy. Check out TheLongWar.net. Become a member of the Hall of Veterans today for the fastest growing library of war game related video content. Modeling, painting, and playing. Not to mention all the sick discounts I receive from some of our sponsors. TheLongWord.net is committed to bringing hobby back. We can't do it without you.